Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, wherever you are on this planet, and welcome to our very special City Life. So today, we are going to talk about CubeSat. And for this, I invited Raffaele Mignolo. Hi, Raffaele, how are you? Fine, thank you for this opportunity. I'm uh, Raffaele Mignolo from Italian Space Agency. I'm the head of uh, uh, Scientific Satellite and Robotic Exploration Mission. And of course, I'm uh, involved in uh, the CubeSat development that we had uh, during the last years in Italy. So we are at the International Astronautical Congress here in Paris, and specifically at the ASI booth. Could you tell us what is ASI? Uh, ASI is uh, the Italian Space Agency uh, uh, that is the uh, the government authority to develop the space pro program in Italy for both uh, uh, space mission and the science related to the space exploration. Well, can you tell us, ASI, what it means exactly in Italian? Agenzia Spaziale Italiana. That's a beautiful language. So that's why we wanted to hear that. Hi. Right. So, um, Raffaele, you are involved in a very interesting CubeSat. That's gonna be uh, basically changing the changing the world. I think. I think. Uh, you know, I'm biased. I love asteroids. So tell us a bit about Licia. Yeah, uh, Licia uh, Licia Cube is a, a small cubesat. As you can see here, the mockup is the same platform uh, that uh, the Italian company Argo name Argotech has developed uh, during the last years. And uh, uh, specifically, now we have a uh, running Lisha, Lisha Cube on board the DART mission, NASA uh, mission, uh, whose objective is to try to modify the trajectory of an asteroid. This is a very important uh, test, technological test, in order to have a mean to guarantee the planetary defense in the, in the future, never done before. Uh, and Licha will uh, act as a reporter because he is equipped with uh, two camera system. Mm -hmm. It's a small satellite in the in whole uh, subsystem. So it's completely analogous to the big one, in, just in scale. And is able to uh, navigate uh, autonomously. And in this moment is flying together the mother uh, ship of uh, that mission to uh, meet the, 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 the asteroid, target asteroid, which is the Deimos, next week. And uh, once uh, that mission will uh, produce this impact in order to modify the trajectory, uh, Lisha Cube will be at uh, uh, proper distance in order to take picture so to witness this uh, uh, event, and we'll be able to, to give us the, what is going on there. Right. And uh, then, of course, we'll contribute to understand if the main objective of that has been reached or not. Because then we have to analyze the data also taken from, da from ground in order to see what is the resulting trajectory of the uh, asteroid. Yeah, so that's remarkable. We're going to impact an uh, a mission on an asteroid, and this tiny satellite is going to basically be the witness. Yes. It's going to be the one that's going to basically tell yeah. us what happened yeah. during the impact. Yes. Uh, one question I have is how such a small thing can send data to Earth? How does that work? It is a communication system based on a proper uh, band, and of course we use uh, the uh, Deep Space Network from NASA, and uh, then we received the data in uh, uh, Turin, where the Argotech company is located. I would like to remark that this is the first time we have a CubeSat in the deep space, and the first time that we are experiencing mission control from ground, never done before. So I have to congratulate with a uh, uh, very young team, which uh, they are doing uh, very good job. In fact, we are receiving the, the, all of the information about the status and the trajectory of the initiative. That means at least the, the ground control chain is working properly. All right, thank you. So 
We are, uh, this spacecraft is now flying in space. I heard it's separated for the mothership. You mentioned that. Did you get some data already? Of course, because we are, the, the team is uh, controlling the, 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 the project, sending the proper command in order to correct uh, the trajectory because uh, uh, the, the CubeSat must be in a, a specific uh, trajectory and position in order to accomplish the, the, the job that is taking the picture. So it's a very hard uh, to reach because it, the distance are very, is very, very high. The, the satellite is very small. The target is also very small. So it's not, uh, we are not taking picture of uh, Jupiter or Saturn, which yeah. are very big. It's a very small uh, celestial body. It's a 800 meters asteroid yeah, plus it's, it's 200 very meters small. small. Space All right, Raffaele, thank you very much. Good luck with uh, the rest of the, the mission. Let's cross uh, fingers and toes and, and everything. Just uh, to, uh, to, to explain that this, together with the other CubeSat developed uh, in this year's, for example, Argo Moon on SLS-1, Artemis-1 mission, which will be launched for next week, together with other uh, astrobio uh, experiments. Open this uh, new uh, development in Italy. Uh, in, in fact, as he has uh, stated, a specific uh, unit, specific department, which will follow the CubeSat in the future, next year. Okay. Yeah, there, there is. Uh, you have Alberto who's going to talk to us about that. Thank you very much, Rafael, again. So, Alberto, let me just Hi, check. Frank. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. Good. Let me just check if the sound is still working. Yes. All right, good. So we're going to cut that. Don't worry. Alberto, um, Alberto Fedele. So where right. are you? Uh, where do you work? I work at the Italian Space Agency, right. as in, as say, my colleagues, Rafael. And I'm in the unit of micro nanosatellites uh, development unit. In fact. So my job here is to develop the next generation of the nanosatellites and the micro satellites in Italy. All right. Yeah, so I talked to you a little bit before this. Uh, we have time to explore the show together. Um, so there is this program yeah. called Algol. Algol, Algor, correct. Algol is uh, one of the stars of the USA major constellation. Mm -hmm. And uh, together with uh, Mizar, they form uh, famous binary stars. And Mizar is the bigger star, while uh, Algol is the, the smallest one. And uh, I, we like this analogy for the for the name of our program, because uh, these small satellites want to work together with the bigger satellites, the more traditional one, for the future of uh, space. For us, it's very important. And there's also another analogy that uh, we like to talk about. When our president picked this name from this program, he told about the story that uh, in the past, they used uh, tests for eyesight. Mm -hmm. We were able to recognize uh, Alcor from Mizar. You have a good vision. And uh, as an agency, we hope to have here a good vision to invest uh, in this program and have an important role in the future in the non sector, non satellite sector. Yeah. All right. So you gave a talk at um, at the IC. You show me some slide. I'm gonna sh I'm gonna show some slide during this show okay. where all this constellation of uh, of CubeSat. So. Can you give us a few examples of CubeSat that's being developed or are going to be developed? Yeah, during the first day of this conference, we presented the Alcor program at the ISC. And Alcor is a program of uh, 90 million that uh, the Italian Space Agency has funded. We want to have a very important role as a primary, primary actor in the nano satellite sector. And uh, we have uh, collected the interest from our uh, national community about possible mission that uh, we want to develop. And we got a huge uh, response from uh, our uh, national community. We received uh, more than uh, around 49 uh, proposals uh, about mission, and we decided to select uh, 20 of them. Uh, right now, the first batch has been already funded of uh, the first 11 mission. We already started uh, with national funds uh, six mission. And we have two additional missions that have been funded with uh, inside the ESA GSTP program. So we also collaborate uh, with ESA with, uh, in this program. Right now, we are uh, focused to start also the remaining mission, the first batch, and to send the contract for the next mission. And in the end, we will have these 20 missions that cover all several different fields of uh, the space sector. We have uh, Earth observation mission, telecommunication mission, also planetary exploration mission. So there is a really huge amount of several missions that uh, 
the main important things that are uh, really uh, important that we want to push forward the limits of this uh, kind of platforms. In fact, they are, the technology that we want to develop for this mission is really challenging, but it's the reason why we invest so many money in this program. For example, if I can give you some example, we are trying to do some uh, Earth observation mission regarding uh, several CubeSat that will fly information with uh, a synthetic aperture radar distributed along this uh, uh, platform. And this is really important. This is really difficult because it's never been before to try to have uh, such a radar in a uh, small dimension of uh, a nanosatellite. We have also the constellation of uh, telecommunication for the Internet of Things. We have the mission of space weather or uh, also the study of uh, solar flames. We have other missions regarding in orbit servicing and orbit inspection. And there is also another nice mission that wants to be able to autonomously navigate in the space with a camera that is able to recognize features on planets. We will test that first on Earth and we'll, uh, then we will be able to use that technology also for future exploration in, the, in our system. And in the end, we also have an exploration mission regarding uh, a moon of Mars, the Deimos moon. We have this mission that will uh, try to have uh, a secondary payload from uh, a bigger mission to uh, invest in the southern moon and to have also a small CubeSat that will be deployed from uh, the bigger one CubeSat and we try to land on the moon to try to do an ISIS over there. So a lot of challenges that we are trying to assess. Pretty, pretty ambitious for uh, the Italian Space Agency. So what, what happened? Why, why this program was created? What is, it's a political decision? It's an economical decision? Do you, can you tell us the background here? I think that in this new space economy sector, the world of nanosatellites, this platform, are an, will have an important role. And uh, our president got the vision to invest, uh, as I say, 90 million for the, this first kind of mission, because he thinks it's really important to have uh, as Italy a prominent role in this new sector. So we believe that uh, this will be part of the future of, uh, uh, of space and we are investing and already doing some mission. We already have heritage, just like we talked before with uh, Licia Cube, with Argomon, Ipergone, several other missions. And now we want to we create a dedicated unit in 2020 to follow uh, this, uh, this uh, kind of platform. And we are putting effort with, together with uh, our head of unit, Steven Atabucci, and uh, my colleagues there. We want to try to do something uh, important and uh, have a good results for Italy. All right. Uh, one personal question. So you are um, you an engineer? What's uh, what's you? What, what, what did you? How did you become involved in this? What did you study? I am an aerospace engineer. I uh -huh. got a degree at the Polytechnic of Milan. Then. Uh, a master's degree at the University of Rome, a PhD in uh, University of Naples, so I did all the university in Italy. Then I also went to Florida at the University of Florida for a post postdoc. And uh, I, start, I started working with CubeSat when I was in college. Italy has a long tradition for uh, a project involving CubeSat for uh, educational purpose. And then uh, I followed that path even after in my career. So, before came in, came in here to the Italian Space Agency, I was working at, in Florida, developing a CubeSat uh, for uh, NASA. So it's been something that always interests me. And uh, now I'm really happy that something that starts as educational program is really important in the future of the space. Thank you very much, Alberto. We have the third uh, person here, Alessandro. Can you join us? Yeah, sure. Hi, thank you. Uh, so, Alessandro, you uh, you don't work for the for ASI. No, I work for Argotech, which is the prime contractor for both Argo Moon and Lichy Cube. Okay. So this is not the real satellite, right? No. <laughs> this is a mock-up. Yeah, sure. Uh, maybe we're gonna ask the camera to come closer, and we're gonna show the 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 CubeSat. Can you give us a short uh, rundown yeah, sure. about what uh, is it? I'm gonna like explain the main features of okay. the satellite. Obviously, as you can see, this is a 6U satellite. So it has a standard form factor, which is uh, given by the, the standards that we have. Here on the front, we can see the two main payloads, which are two optical payloads. Uh -huh. So basically, this one on the bottom has a wider field of view, and it is used to identify the target that we want to take pictures of. And this one on the top uh, is uh, the one with uh, like a higher magnification so that we can take higher resolution pictures of the target. And this architecture is very similar both in Argon and Lisha Cube because basically in both cases, uh, what you want to do is witnessing something. In one case, the impact 
top of GARP. In the other case, is the ICPS, the second stage of SLS after that it, it has completed its, its operational life. Um, then you can see here on the top the solar panels, which are, I mean, they uh, blow, they they basically close and they yeah. deploy when the satellite is in space. When it's launched, they are installed configuration, uh -huh. so they lie here on the on the side of the satellite. Then once we the satellite has the command to deploy, it, uh, there is a cutter here that uh, cuts uh, constraints, and then there are, it's, they are spring loaded, so they just deploy. Um, and the, the control of the teles of the satellite, the altitude, and, and so on. How does it has it done? Yeah, we have uh, an ADCS uh, attitude. Can you to explain this? Yeah. <laughs> so basically, we have uh, uh, on a system that uh, understands what understands what's the attitude of the satellite in space by taking a look at the stars, basically. Uh -huh. And then we have some actuators that that move and that uh, help us to have the right position of the satellite. Then we have also a propulsion system in both missions because we need to make uh, orbital maneuvers and change the trajectory of the satellite itself. Uh, we use two slightly different technologies because in one case we need like more push and the other one was slightly less. Um, and so you you can see can take a look at the bottom. You can see all the nozzles and so okay. on. But it's uh, we want to stay here. So this thing is as an is entire is propulsion system, which is very small. It's, yeah, uh, it's not. What kind of propulsion system are we talking about here? Yes. Gas? In one stone? case, it's cold gas. In the other one case, it's a green propellant. Okay. And I mean, with, given this size of platform, it's there are many CubeSats with a propulsion system around yet. So it's another challenge that we added the side of working in deep space, uh, having telecommunication delays and so on. So it's uh, super exciting. Good. Well, thank you very much for explaining this to us. So the company is called Argotech. Argotech yeah. Where are you located? Uh, we are located in Turin, Italy. Okay. Uh, we have a branch in the US that we are starting to, to operate in, in these days. And I mean, we're around uh, 80 people in this moment. And we are specialized in this kind of uh, not so common uh, missions made with the small satellites. So where will, we, where will you be on September 26th when we will be the <laughs> uh, I'll be in the office with my colleagues, uh, taking a look at the operations. And uh, I'll be with, their, uh, with them for sure. All right. In our case, uh, we'll do, be doing a city live on the 26th. We talk about DART, the DART mission, and uh, and watch the impact together, and hopefully get some data coming from the spacecraft. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah. All right. right. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. We are the City Institute. Um, you can follow us on social media at city.org. Uh, you, of course, if you like this video, I know it's a bit noisy. It's very special, but I think it's a great opportunity to talk about new technology here at the, at the IAC. So click on the like button, follow us, uh, make a comment, tell us what you think about this work, and we will answer to your questions. Thanks again, and see you next week. Bye-bye.